So every so often, I make one of these videos where I read through something and then I explain to you how ridiculous it is, and I usually end up getting pretty mad. This is gonna be one of those videos. Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and today we got a doozy for you. Uh, this is an uh, announcement of, of legislation from Senator Ed Markey, who is a senator from the beloved state of Massachusetts. Uh, you know, the place where the American Revolution started. And uh, man, he's got a fun one for you, so let's just get into this here. Uh, this is dated January 11th, 2024, and this is titled, Following January 6th Anniversary, Senator Markey and Congressman Raskin introduced legislation to stop private paramilitary activity. You know this is gonna be fun. Washington, January 11th, 2024, following the anniversary of the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol, Senator Ed J. Markey, duh, Democrat, Massachusetts, and Congressman Jamie Raskin, MD08, uh, introduced the Preventing Private Paramilitary Activity Act, legislation that would create a federal prohibition on paramilitary groups through civil and criminal enforcement. Okay, so right there, let's just, let's just stop. That violates at least two uh, amendments straight out the gate that I can think of. Uh, the first one, of course, is your right to assembly, right? Which is protected in your first amendment. Uh, and then the second, of course, is your second amendment right, which specifically has the word militia in the amendment. That's not a word that we add or make up later, but it specifically has a militia. The militia being necessary to the security of the free state, right? The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So uh, why do we have uh, the right to keep and bear arms? So that you can train for war. That's why the second amendment exists. That's not me making something up. That was the original intent and purpose of the amendment. So. <laughs> This is gonna get me fun. The prohibition would hold the individuals liable who directly engage in certain types of conduct. Okay, just think about how that's worded for a second. They want to hold you liable for engaging in certain types of conduct. Well, who's gonna determine what those types of conduct are? What, what, what conduct? Not like breaking laws, not committing criminal activities, conduct. Just think about that. Interfering with government proceedings, Pretending to be law enforcement. I'm sorry, is there like a big problem with people pretending to be law enforcement? Who does that? Nobody does that. That is something they make up so that they can charge you with it. And violating people's constitutional rights. <laughs> While armed and acting as part of a private paramilitary organization. Now, maybe at some point they define what a private paramilitary organization is. I don't know, I haven't read this whole thing yet, so we're, we're going through this one together, it'll be fun. A, a private paramilitary, that could just be you and your boys hanging out and doing some shooting and maneuvering drills together, right? That could literally be anything that's interpreted as you training for war. Which, by the way, again, is the entire point of the Second Amendment. That's why we have the Second Amendment, so that civilians, uh, I hate that word, you know that if you've been watching this channel for a while, can prepare for war. That's why we have the amendment. That's why we have the militia. That's why we have a armed populace so they can fight off threats to their liberty, foreign and domestic. That's the whole point of the Second Amendment. I'm not making this up. This isn't crazy. This is why the amendment was written. It's basic history. I mean, basic, just bare facts history. It's indisputable. There are currently no federal laws that address paramilitary activity or protect millions of Americans whose rights are threatened by this type of violent, anti-democratic intimidation. He says there's no federal laws about it. That's not true. There are, of course, federal laws about it. There's the Second Amendment and there's the First Amendment. There are federal laws protecting your right as enshrined in our nation's, supposedly, most sacred legal document to protect your rights to train with arms. That was the whole point, right? To be prepared to fight and win wars. That's, that's the whole point. Of course there are private, excuse me, of course there are laws about private military activity. We want to encourage it. That's, that's been the history of this nation since the beginning. Anti-democratic intimidation. Now, you notice they say that, right? They're gonna go on to make up some examples, I'm sure, of what that would look like. But one, no it's not, it's not anti-democratic. Uh, two, we're not a democ democracy, we're a republic 
for like the umpteenth time, I will say that until I'm blue in the face. I will keep beating that dead horse because, you know, terms matter just a little bit. Again, I know we're here at the fall of the empire and nothing really matters, but let's just be clear, it is a republic. It's not a democracy. Uh, so if you want to call me anti-democratic, I, I guess I'm okay with that because I believe in a republic. There's a reason democracies are evil and turn to tyranny. Uh, just look at Athens. Thirdly, uh, this is not being used to intimidate anybody at all. Actually, that's a lie. It has never been used for that, actually, that I can think of. I'm sure there's some fringe case, right? But by and large, the purpose of Americans training for war is to intimidate people who would want to attack and invade our country and take away our rights. Those people, of course, should be afraid and intimidated because we won't go quietly. All, although all 50 states prohibit private milit paramilitary conduct, these laws are far too often outdated, unenforced, or ignored. I'd be super curious to hear what some of those laws are, honestly. Private military organizations pose a threat, not only to national security, but also they present a public safety problem that extends beyond any single state. For example, private paramilitary actors like the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers traveled across state lines on January 6th. You know, for a bunch of private paramilitary organizations that travel across state lines on January 6th, it's curious that no one was arrested with a gun on January 6th, uh, ever. It's curious that no protesters actually used any guns to shoot anybody on this supposed deal. You know, in fact, the only person that was shot was Ashley Babbitt, who was shot by a uh, Capitol Police officer who got off with it, of course. So... It's really curious how you're characterizing these organizations. By the way, when they say a threat to national security, what they mean is a threat to us telling you what to do. That's of course what they mean because the American national security has never been threatened by private military organizations, ever. In fact, it's only been bolstered. National security has been bolstered by private uh, citizens having the right to keep and bear arms. That's the point of the law. I also love that they call it a public safety problem. Again, show, show me the, the danger to the public here. Uh, they don't have any, right? They're just making things up. But, you know, when you can make up facts, it, it, it comes together pretty well for you. Three years ago, white supremacists affiliated with paramilitary organizations stormed the U.S. Capitol, shattering windows, walls, and the families of five U.S. Capitol police officers, Senator Markey said. Private, okay, let's just stop there. Um, okay. <laughs> First of all, we know who broke the windows and let everybody in. It was the FBI. That's pretty apparent. That's come out now, right? So that's interesting. Two, um, white supremacists affiliated with, right? They're, again, they're going to harp on the white supremacy thing. They're going to try to link this made-up term, white supremacy, to this new made-up term, private paramilitary organization, to make it sound as scary as possible. Uh, the propaganda is just tireless. It's not even good propaganda. You know what I mean? Like, they can't even... They can't even make something up that has like the barest connection to truth. They just need to go out and completely fabricate things that don't exist. Private paramilitary actors such as the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers pose a serious threat to democracy and the rule of law. And we must create new prohibitions on their unauthorized activities that interfere and with the exercise of people's constitutional rights. The forces of bigotry, hatred, and violent extremism must be stopped for the sake of our democracy. Honestly, this is so nauseating. I don't even know if I'm able to finish this video. I mean, <laughs> first of all, I love that he's talking about protecting people's constitutional rights, except, of course, your constitutional rights, because who needs those? And then again, it's, it's a threat to democracy. You, you notice there's the sacred god of democracy, right? Which, by the way, again, not a democracy, a republic, but... They want to say, oh, these, these are they're white supremacists, they're, they're threatening democracy, they're, they're private paramilitary, they're dangerous to public safety, right? They're just throwing on all the terms that they can think of in order to try to make a mountain out of a molehill. Or maybe not even a molehill, maybe like a, like a depression in the ground, they're trying to make a mountain out of that. It, it's, it's honestly pathetic and fairly vapid and, and uh, incredibly transparent. They even use the words, you know, bigotry and hatred and violent extremism. Shh. Show me where those things are, because I think you're just making it up. Patrolling neighborhoods, impending law enforcement, and storming the U.S. Capitol, private marriage military groups like the Oath Keepers, the Three Percenters, and the Proud Boys are using political violence to intimidate our people and threaten democratic government and the rule of law, said Congressman Raskin. Patrolling neighborhoods. So, you know, 
when they were burning down uh, cities over the summer of 2020 and you want to stand outside your small business with your rifle because you don't want your store to get burned down, that would be private paramilitary activity. See, it's the anarcho-tyranny thing, right? They're going to squeeze you from both ends. You need to protect the constitutional rights of the rioters who are burning down cities. No, of course, we're not going to charge them with crimes. That would be preposterous. But you, if you would like to stop the slaughter and stop the anarchy and keep your house from being burned to the ground, well, sir, that's a crime. That's, that's pri You're posing a danger to public safety. You're anti-democratic. How dare you think about violating people's thoughts of feelings of safety? That's violating their constitutional rights. You see what they're doing? They're, they're going to squeeze you from both ends, right? They'll let the criminals run amok in the streets, but in the name of protecting people's rights, they'll tell you you can't have any. Our legislation makes the obvious but essential clarification that these domestic extremists, paramilitaries, operations... I don't even think those words make sense together. Are in no way protected by our Constitution. Actually, they are 1,000% protected by the Constitution. That's literally the point of the law. I'm grateful to Senator Markey for his partnership on this critical effort to protect the rule of law, deter insurrection, and defend our democracy. We don't have a democracy. They don't believe in the rule of law. And the only thing they're interested in deterring is your resistance to their tyrannical ideas in order to crush you with the power of bureaucracy and propaganda and government to comply with what they want. A copy of the legislation can be found here, or one page, blah, blah, blah. The legislation creates different tiers of criminal penalties based on whether violations result in injury or property damage, provides harsher penalties for repeat offenders, and allows for probationary sentences for first-time offenders. Oh, how gracious of them. It also creates civil remedies by authorizing the Department of Justice to seek injunctive relief against paramilitary activity and by creating a private right of action for individuals harmed by private paramilitary activity to seek injunctive relief and or damages. So your neighbors can sue you if they feel unsafe because they know that you train with guns. That's essentially what that's saying. The legislation contains clear exceptions for activities such as historic reenactments, state sanctioned trainings, and veterans parades. Oh, oh, that's nice. We can still do historic reenactments. Maybe we could do the historic reenactments where private paramilitary citizens shot the British in the face when they come to try to take their guns away. Maybe we could still do those reenactments, you think? State sanctioned trainings. What that means is police organizations, right? Oh, there's still a car out. don't worry. You can still train for the police in order to grind your boot heel into the face of the civilians who still think they have freedoms and rights and stuff. Specifically, the legislation would prohibit the following dangerous conduct. This is gonna be good. Publicly patrolling, drilling, or engaging in harmful or deadful, deadly paramilitary techniques. That's all, that's all training. That's all training right there. I've been to so many classes, I've taught classes that would probably violate that, right? Because what are we doing? We're learning to shoot guns effectively. We're learning to shoot guns in the context of teams, right? So that would now be private paramilitary uh, who harm, engaging in harmful or deadly paramilitary techniques. Of course you're supposed to be deadly. That's, that's what the Second Amendment exists for, so that people can fight wars. Do you want soldiers to not be deadly? because that kind of defeats the whole point. But again, that's the point. They want you to be weak and unarmed and pathetic and, you know, thank you, sir, may I have another. Interfering with or interrupting government proceedings. Like, when has that happened? Oh, maybe that happened when uh, they were gonna, you know, kidnap Governor Whitmer out of Michigan. You know, there's a private paramilitary organization that was gonna go kidnap the governor. Oh, wait, that was the FBI. Interfering with the exercise of someone else's constitutional rights. <laughs> you know, it's so absurd. You just gotta have a sense of humor every once in a while. Falsely assuming the functions of law enforcement and asserting authority over others. Is that kind of like what you're doing here right now with this law thing? Training to engage in such behavior. <laughs> Training to engage. 
So if you're going to train to do anything, um, paramilitary, straight to jail. The Preventing Private Paramilitary Activity Act is endorsed by Protect Democracy. Of course it is. Center for American Progress, naturally. Institute for Constitutional Advocacy. Turns out they don't advocate for the Constitution. And protection at Georgetown University Law Center. Oh, gee, that's a shocker. As the events of January 6, 2021, I laid bare, the rise of private paramilitary groups pose a real threat to democracy and the rule of law. In recent years, we have seen such groups interfere with the exercise of constitutionally protected rights. No, you haven't. You have never seen that. In fact, all those organizations have ever asked for is to keep their rights, but, you know, again, truth and laws, none of that really matters anymore. Attempt to carry out unsanctioned law enforcement activities, that's never happened. And target vulnerable populations, said Deanna L. Maloney, I don't know how to pronounce that, Council at Protect Democracy. Some liar lady. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and there's a bunch more quotes by a bunch of people about why we need to pass this, okay? <sighs> pass what you want. Send bachelors, do brave deeds, and endure.